<laughs> so good to see each and every one of you here today. What a joy to see all of the families that are here with us today and, and celebrating Christmas together. That's a good feeling, isn't it? When all our families can be together. There are those who are traveling right now and away, but uh, we're, we're so thankful that you folks are here today. Uh, good to see some of our uh, old friends, Jeff and Diana, are here today. We're glad that they're here. You folks, some of you remember Jeff and Diana, who are a very, very integral part of our church family in the past, and they're here celebrating Christmas. And it's just so good to see each and every one of you. Let's pray together, shall we? Father in heaven, we thank you for your love and grace. We thank you for this special day that is so meaningful to all of us. For you so loved this world that you sent your one and only Son. And everyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. It is truly a joyous time. I think of the angels that announced your coming that said, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace on those whom his favor rests. So Lord, bless us now with that peace and that joy, the hope that we have in Christ. We have come to worship the Lord and to worship you, Father. So bless us now as we worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together, shall we?
Aren't you glad for the coming of our Savior? He came to bring great joy on the earth. Somebody from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho is calling me right now, and I'm not sure who that might be, so we'll let that one go. How's that sound? I'm not sure Jesus is calling from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho right now, so we'll just kind of let that one go, okay? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. No more let sins and sorrows grow. is found for as far as the curse is found he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations true it glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and I am so thankful that God showed his love to us. 
You know, the whole world was waiting for a Savior to come. Israel was waiting for a Savior to come. And they knew that prophecy of old had said that uh, a Messiah would come, a Savior would come. Of course, they were looking more for a political Savior of some sort. But we know that Jesus came to save our soul, to redeem us and to lift us back to the Father. <clears throat> Advent is all about that anticipation, that longing, that waiting, that hoping for something or someone to come that would change everything. And of course, we believe that that long-awaited person is Jesus Christ. Amen? And we're also looking forward to his coming again. Amen? We're looking forward to that. Folks, when Jesus comes, he's going to make everything right the way it's supposed to be. Amen? Do you believe that? He's going to make everything the way it's supposed to be. So we're on this end, if you will, like Israel of old was longing for the Savior to come, longing for the Messiah to come. We're on this end knowing that Jesus has already come. But guess what? He is coming again. Praise the Lord. I'm excited about that. We want to sing uh, to, for you and join with us, if you know it, a, a great, great song called the Advent Hymn. It's a song about Advent, that longing, that hoping, that desire, that, that craving for someone to come and bring redemption. So sing it with us if you know it.
been looking forward to that day, aren't you? The scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. When we think about Christmas, we think about a lot of different things, gift giving and all kinds of things. But folks, Christmas is about God sending to the world our Savior. Amen? That's what it's all really all about. God loved us so much that he sent to us a Savior. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree, from sin to set me free. been looking for a savior and many are still looking for a savior and one glorious day god sent that savior to the world and we think about that every christmas we should be thinking about what god did for us because of his love one day when the world was in so much distress god sent the son god sent his savior when the world was as black as it could be, maybe even much like it is today, God still has sent the Savior, and all who look to him can have their hearts radically changed, filled with the love of God, and that, like we shared last night, that light and that love can spread like wildfire from one to another if we just live our lives for the Lord. And the good news is he's coming again. And we need, to be, we need to be preparing for that. Amen? Each one of us needs to be preparing for that moment when Christ comes again. We don't know when, we don't know the day or the hour, but we do know that he is coming. So the idea is living our lives for the Lord in preparation for that coming. Listen to the words of this song as we sing. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as would be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. Word became flesh and light shined among us, glory revealed. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he buried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day they 
led him. Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on a tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is he. And that held nations stretched out on a tree, took the nails for me. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified, freely forever. One day he's coming for glorious day, for glorious day. One day the grave would conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord, evermore. Death could not hold him, grave could not keep him, rising again. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified, freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. trumpet will sound for his coming one day the skies with his glories will shine wonderful day my beloved one is bringing my savior jesus is mine living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, a glorious day, glorious day, glorious day. Praise the Lord. Looking forward to that day, living for that day. Well, praise the Lord. I was getting so blessed with that song, I could hardly sing it. So, so thrilled. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you would please, to Matthew chapter 1. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 1, and then a very familiar verse, John three sixteen. And then Revelation chapter 1. I think you already know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Would you stand with me, please, in honor of the reading of God's Word? <clears throat> in, Re in Matthew chapter 1, we read, This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was, a fa was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. We talked about that a little bit last week. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, 
and you are to give him the name say it with me Jesus because he will save his people from their sins in Luke's passage it says give him the name Jesus or Yeshua which means God saves <clears throat> John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son the very same son that we just talked about being born that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life and in Revelation we read to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father to him be the glory and power forever and ever amen look look he is coming with the clouds every eye will see him even those who pierced him father bless us now speak into our hearts on this beautiful christmas day thank you for these folks who are here today thank you for bringing them here to this place to worship you and now lord reward us by speaking into our hearts and into our lives changing us preparing us for that great and glorious day when you're going to be coming again bless each one remarkably bless every home lord there are some here who need a special touch from you who are going through various uh, trials in their life lord i pray for your strong and mighty presence to touch their hearts and their lives in jesus name amen and god bless you thank you so much for being here <clears throat> Well, Christmas Day is finally here. We've been waiting for it. We've been preparing for it. We've been wrapping gifts and doing all kinds of things in preparation for it. And worship team practices and on and on it goes. Parties and activities and so on. We even had yesterday morning, we had the, uh, the highway patrol, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the shop with the cop thing here. We had about 100 people here. We served breakfast to all the kids. And then Santa came flying in from, well, on the DPS helicopter and landed right out there. God out came in the kids were elated it was a fun time it was a great time all the preparation during this advent season we've been focusing on the meaning of the word advent it's not a common word it's not a word we use often but it means excitedly anticipating something special or someone special excitedly anticipating the arrival of some event or some special person for us folks that special person is say it with me jesus jesus <clears throat> each week we lit one of the four candles representing the the coming of hope and peace and joy and love last night we lit the center candle during our christmas eve service we lit the center candle representing the christ candle the celebration of the coming of christ the baby jesus coming his first coming folks jesus came to give us hope amen he came to give us hope he came to give us a deep settled peace in our hearts peace with god peace with each other jesus came to bring that peace he came to bring us joy in our hearts in a very joyless world and grieving and hopeless world he came to give us joy overwhelming joy this the scripture says the joy of the lord is our strength amen if there if if the world is going to see true joy they ought to be seeing it within us amen they ought to be seeing it within the church, God's people. Jesus came to give us that joy, overflowing joy in our hearts. Jesus came to reveal the immense love that God has for you and for me. He came to reveal to us that immense love and then to fill our hearts with that love, overflowing to be shared with one another. 
all wrapped up in that precious little child that came to us. Jesus came to do all that. Jesus came to us once, but folks, guess what? He's coming again. And that's what I'm so excited about. He is coming again to straighten this mess out. <laughs> Jesus came to us once to be our Savior. To this time when he comes, he is coming to be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he will set everything straight. Isn't that exciting? When he comes, everything is going to be set right the way that God meant it for it to be in the first place. So I'm, I'm so excited. I'm excited about his first coming and what it means for you and for me, but I'm excited especially now about his second coming and what he plans to do when he comes. And folks, we need to be getting ourselves ready for that. <clears throat> the first thing that we want to see is the situation. Why did Jesus come? What was the problem? What was the situation? Simply this, God had created a perfect world. When he, the creator, created our universe, everything working perfectly, a perfect world, God's highest and most prized creation was the first man and the first woman, Adam and Eve. Their world, their relationship with one another, their relationship with God was perfect. They had everything they could ever need or want in God's perfect world that he created for them. But we know that after being so deceitfully and convincingly, convincingly tempted by Satan, our first parents chose to disobey God. They chose to disobey God, which caused a broken relationship with God. Their sin plunged the whole world into darkness and brought upon all mankind the penalty of disease and death. Their sin separated us from God, who is the creator and the giver of life. We see the terrible effects of our sin and separation from God all around us, don't we? We see the world and the way it is. It's in the news every day. This, the spirit of, of hatred, the spirit of division, the spirit of selfishness and self-focused and, and, and broken relationships and broken families and, and greed and government corruption and deceitfulness and the constant drumbeats of war and disease and death. The list goes on and on and on of the evidence for the fall of mankind away from God. People try to ease the pain with, and mask the pain with, with drugs or alcohol, but they wake up the next day only to find that the hopelessness is still there. And many are searching for answers. So we see the situation of man. The Bible describes mankind as being spiritually lost fallen, separated from God. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short, have fall short of the glory of God. Fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 tells us the wages of sin is death. Proverbs 18.4 says the one who sins is the one who will die. Isaiah 59, 2 says, Your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden His face from you so that He will not hear you. But, oh, folks, how He loves you and me. Amen? But, oh, how He desperately, He loves you and me in spite of the situation, in spite of the fallenness and the separation. Oh, how He loves you and me. God loved us so much that He sent to us a Savior. We celebrate the Savior's birth every Christmas. Every Christmas we celebrate His birth. When the angel suddenly appeared in the night sky to those shepherds announcing the birth of Christ, what did they say? 
They said, we bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Can you imagine breaking the silence, breaking the separation, breaking the, 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 into the darkness of the world? God says, now I bring you news of great joy. The angel of the Lord specifically told Joseph the name that he was to give this little baby boy. The name Jesus. You are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Even Jesus himself announced the Son of Man has come to do what? To seek and to save that which was lost. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have instead eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't come to condemn us, to, to rip us up, to tell us you're a bunch of stupid idiots. He didn't come to do that. He came to do what? To save us. Not to condemn, but so that the world through him might be saved. He came to change the situation by sending us a Savior. So today, folks, on this Christmas Day, we are celebrating the birth once again of that Savior. We are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We also see another way that Jesus came to bring redemption to save. He came to set an example of how we're supposed to be living our lives. He came to show us what God is really like and the way that he wants us by providing an example to us of living. We know that Jesus grew up among us and lived an absolutely sinless life. He grew up living a perfect, sinless life. Hebrews 4.15 tells us that Jesus was tempted in every way, just like you and I are, except what? He did not fall for the temptation. He did not bow down to Satan. He did not. He was without sin, which made him the perfect sacrifice. But we'll get to that in a moment. Jesus revealed to us all, folks, the kind of life. I, I, I want to impress this upon you today because I think this is the thing that's, that is so missing among most believers and so those who call themselves Christians today. Jesus came to set the example for us of how we're supposed to be living our lives. Okay? Filled with love. The life of Jesus provides to you and me the perfect example, the perfect example of the kind of life that we all should be living We are to walk in the way that he walked. Amen? We are to walk in the way that he walked. Now, I don't mean go out and sell all your cars and start walking everywhere. Of course, it might save on gas prices. I'm not sure, but... No, the idea is to emulate his life, the way that he lived, the way that he walked. We are to walk the, in the same way he walked. Jesus left us an example so that we might follow in his steps. Amen? God wants us to be imitators of Christ. Imitators of Christ. God calls us to be conformed to the image of his Son. That's what holiness is all about. That's what Christ-likeness is all about. That's what Christianity is all about. Being saved, being redeemed, having our hearts changed and filled with love, and then following Jesus and walking in his footsteps and being, becoming more and more like him. Jesus came to set a clear example of the kind of life that truly pleases God. If you really want to know what God is pleased with, look no further than the life of Jesus. Amen? 
If you really want to know what God is looking for and what God wants, then look no further than the life that Jesus lived, bringing glory and honor to God. But folks, we all know what happened. The sinful world rejected Jesus. You see, he lived such an exemplary life that the world became convicted. And so what did they do? He came to be a light in the darkness. He came to reveal what God is really like. But his life revealed the sinfulness of mankind like a light in the darkness. So what did we do? We nailed him to a cross. That's what the world did to Jesus. In, first, in, in John chapter 1 it says, He came to his own, but his own received him not. Come to find out, that was all a part of God's plan. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? God is so much smarter than we are. It was all a part of God's plan for our salvation. You see, Jesus willingly came. He willingly suffered and died on that cross in our place. He came to represent mankind. He became the perfect sacrifice to represent mankind. I want you to think of it right now. Jesus came from heaven, willingly humbled himself, was born in the most humble of circumstances, and then he humbled himself even further and took upon himself the death penalty that we deserve because of our sin. Philippians chapter 2 says he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. When you think about the baby Jesus laying in a cradle, lay, laying in a, in a hay manger, he was taking humanness upon himself. Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. But then guess what, folks? God raised Jesus from the grave. God raised Jesus from the grave. Death could not hold him like we sang just a few moments ago. God raised him up from the grave. So what happens? Folks, Jesus became the solution to mankind's problem. Amen? He came to be the solution for the situation. He was born to be the solution for the problem of sin for all of mankind. Oh, how God loves you and me. Through faith in Jesus, what happens? We're saved. We're redeemed. We're lifted up out of the sin. We're lifted up out of the guilt. We're lifted up out, and we start that journey in Christ likeness. Through faith in Jesus, the scripture says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be what? Saved. Condemned? No. Saved. Everyone who believes in him receives what? Forgiveness. God's forgiveness of all our sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to do what? Forgive our sins. Forgive our sins. <clears throat> I think I skipped a slide. Everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. In Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we walk in the light, and who is the light of the world? Jesus. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, does what? Cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. Through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Isn't that great? Oh, how God loves you and me so much. We see that through faith in Jesus, our relationship with God is restored. The relationship that was broken because of our disobedience and sin. Through Christ, our relationship with God is restored. 1 John 3, 1 says, see, see this, see, behold, 
what manner of love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called what? God's kids. And that is what we are. Scripture after Scripture after Scripture in God's own word makes the point clear that Jesus was born to be the solution to the problem of man's sinfulness to the problem of sin and death. Jesus came once to be our Savior. The Scripture says He was sacrificed <coughs> for our sins once for all when He offered Himself. He entered the most holy place once for all by His own blood, thus obtaining our eternal redemption. Hallelujah. He entered the most holy place once for all through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all we have been made what boy this is a profound verse we have been made holy think about it but by our faith in Jesus we are actually in God's sight seen as holy not not someday maybe no we are made holy in God's sight. What a joy. What a joy. <clears throat> when, when we celebrate Christmas, folks, we are celebrating the first coming of our Savior who provided the solution to the situation. But guess what else? He's coming again. He's coming again. When Jesus comes, folks, listen to this, Satan that caused it all in the first place is going to be defeated forever. When Jesus comes, the deceiver who rebelled against God in the first place, who caused all of the evil in the first place, who by his actions caused the separation between mankind and God, and who, the one who brought all of the death and destruction upon us, he will be cast into hell forever. <coughs> Revelation 20.10 makes it clear. The devil who deceived us will be thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where he will be torn tormented day and night forever and forever. And we're going, yes! Amen? It's coming. It's coming. When Jesus comes, ultimately, to reign and rule over all, that's what's going to happen to the devil. When Jesus comes, he is going to make everything right. This is what I'm so excited about. When Jesus comes, he's going to make everything right as the world was meant to be as God originally intended in the first place. When Christ comes, he's going to make everything right. The scriptures are clear. It says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. That's representing the separation. There was no longer any sea, no longer any separation. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. I, I, I tell you, when, when Ronnie, those doors opened up and Ronnie came in to come down the aisles, I was excited. She looked beautiful, still does, but as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Here's where he's making everything right. He's going to wipe away every tear from our eyes. Think about that. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down 
for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. It's like he's saying, you might not see it yet, but as far as I'm concerned, God is saying, it's a done deal. It's happening. Those who are victorious will inherit all this and will be their God, and they will be my kids, my children. Hallelujah. That's what we're looking for with the coming of Christ. Folks, Jesus is coming again. He came to us once to be our Savior. This time when he comes, he's coming to be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And there will be no more death. There will be no more crying. There will be no more pain. Some of you are going, I can't wait for that. There will be no more separation. Oh, how much God loves you and me. My question for you today that you, you know, and I'm so thankful that you're here, but I'm, my question for you today is simply this. Do you believe in that Jesus? Do you believe in that Jesus? The one who came to us to be our Savior and the one who is coming again. The one who came to, to set us an example for the kind of life that we're supposed to live and then the one who is coming again. Do you believe in Jesus? Have you accepted Jesus as your Savior you see, if you don't personalize it, then it means nothing. It's just religion. But if you make Christ your own, the one that you love, the one that you live for, the one that you are emulating, the one that you're waiting for, then that's a good sign that you've been saved, redeemed. Have you accepted Jesus as your Savior, and have you made him the Lord of your life that means necessarily that we confess our sin that means necessarily that we admit that we need a savior it means necessarily that we confess and admit to to god and say god you're right i do need that savior because i've lived without you and and just life has just gotten totally messed up but if i come to you and live for you then I'll have that peace and hope and joy and love in my heart. As we celebrate this Christmas Day, I was so excited about this Christmas Day, folks. I was so excited about this Christmas Day because we've had Christmases in the past, but for some reason I'm really excited about this one because we're that much closer to the coming of Christ. And we need to get ready. As we celebrate this Christmas Day, are you thankful that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life? As we celebrate this Christmas Day, are you in your heart excitedly, excitedly anticipating his second coming? He becomes our all in all. He's our Savior. He's our Lord, and folks, he is our soon-coming king. Father in heaven, bless us now as we conclude this, this message, this time together. I pray, Lord, that the truth of your word will have sunk deep into our hearts, each of our hearts. And if there's someone here today, Lord, who would say, I believe in Jesus, Coming here today has changed my life. I now believe. I confess my need of a Savior. I have been living in sin and living separated from God, and now I, I come to the Lord humbly, confessing my sin, confessing my need of a Savior with a desire to make Jesus the Lord of my life from this moment on. As we sing today, oh, how he loves you and me. Today in your heart, if you are believing and accepting Jesus as your Savior, first of all, don't resist. Don't resist in any way. 
let the Holy Spirit do the work in you that he really wants to do. And guess what? Every Christmas day from here on out will be remarkable for you because you will have known that you have placed your faith in Jesus on a Christmas day. Lord, bless us now as we conclude this time together. And all we ask is that you, without embarrassing anyone, without, Lord, you know the work that you're doing in every heart. And so, Lord, as we sing, if there's someone here today who would say, yes, I need Jesus, and I accept him now as my Savior, let's sing together, shall we? just now to accept Christ as your Savior. Tell me about it. Feel free to come and share with that with me. I'd like to help you on your spiritual journey with the Lord. It would be such an honor to be able to do that. I also want to let you know that I'll be on KMOG radio at 2 o'clock today. If you want to turn, turn in your radios, they're doing a Christmas special all day today and and I'll be on there. And, uh, of course, you've already heard most of the message that I'm going to be sharing on KMOG. But, you know, hey, it'd be so just want to let you know that they're doing Christmas, Christmas music and, 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 and special scripture, scripture readings and so on. So I'm on there quite a bit. But you're welcome to tune in to that and hear this all over again. And may the Lord bless you. Stand with me, would you please, as we dismiss this service. It's Christmas. The angels are singing. And I know the reason. The Savior is born. It's Christmas. Like shouting, joy to the world, joy to the world, joy to the world. Go out and spread a little bit of that joy throughout this week and the coming year. By the way, see you next year. Okay. Because next Sunday is January the 1st. Great day. Merry Christmas.